<clears throat> Hello, my name is John Furick, and this video will present to beginner level piano students a basic understanding of the circle of fifths music scale organization diagram. Now, before we go any further, I, I do want to mention that uh, I will be moving the camera closer to the diagram so you can see it in more detail here shortly after uh, I conclude my opening remarks. A basic review of the circle of fists indicates that the major scales are on the outer circle, the minor scales are on the inner circle, and these notations uh, between the two scale, my, major and minor scales uh, are key signatures related to each specific scale. <clears throat> now all scales on the chart, on the diagram are a fifth interval apart. And I will explain in more detail here shortly just what a fifth interval is, along with uh, we'll talk about key signatures and uh, and other uh, features of the circle of fifths. Now, when you first look at this, uh, it looks very confusing, <clears throat> and that's because it is confusing. It's uh, it has a lot of letters going one way or another and a lot of letters in the, in the middle there and all these notations. Uh, uh, I remember when I was uh, beginning my piano studies as an adult, um, I was reading a book and I came across a diagram of the circle of fists and I looked at it <laughs> and uh, I just turned a page. I couldn't uh, deal with it at that time, <laughs> but uh, but that's that's why I'm here right now to explain it to you and to show you there are some uh, very clever patterns in here, and uh, I'm going to point those out to you, uh, and hopefully uh, by the end of this. Uh, video, you'll you'll know it a lot better, and once you do know it better, it's uh, it's an excellent tool for helping you to go on and learn about chords and harmony. Now, some concepts uh, you may not understand at first, which is okay; it's understandable, and uh, to be honest. There may be sections of this video, if not the whole thing, uh, you may have to look at a second time before you understand everything. But again, I have no doubt when uh, we finish here that you will understand the circle of fists a lot better and uh, it will really help you understand uh, chords and harmony. I would also like to mention that I completed another video called Basic Music Scales, a presentation to beginning piano students. And in that video, I explain what scales are, uh, how to uh, understand them better, and how to create them. And I go over a lot of terminology in that video that I will use in this video here on the Circle of Fists. So I um, recommend that you uh, look at that video too, and you'll uh, together you'll get a, a much broader understanding. Now we're going to start out by uh, looking at some definitions and uh, explaining some definitions to you that you will need. And uh, to do that, I will be moving the camera closer.
Our first definition is the obvious one, which is circle of fists. And I think a more formal description would be a circular display of major and minor music scales at fifth intervals with their respective key signatures. The circle of fists is an arrangement in a closed circle of major and minor scales that are a fifth interval apart. There are a total of 15 major scales on the outer circle and 15 minor scales on the inner circle. Major and minor scales with sharp key signatures are on the right side of the circle over in this area and major and minor scales with flat key signatures are on the left side of the circle over in that area. C major and A minor do not have sharp or flat notes in their key signatures, which is why this area is blank. Also, the lower part of each circle contains enharmonic keys or scales that will be discussed in more detail shortly. And that's these three pair of scales right here that are on the major circle and three are on the minor circle. And I'll get into those and why we have them and what purpose they serve. The next definition is the fifth interval, also known as the dominant or perfect fifth the fifth interval is a piano key that is a fifth interval from its corresponding tonic key. Now, a tonic key is the first key of a scale. So, and what you're looking at with all these letters here and all these letters in here and notes are tonic keys. Uh, again, it's the first note of a scale, and it gives the scale its name. And a tonic key can be a white or black key, and the fifth interval key can be a white or black key. And the fifth interval is, to be more specific, a fifth interval key is seven half steps to the right of the tonic key. So if C is our tonic key, the fifth interval from C is seven half steps. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is the G key. So the fifth interval note from C is G. And that's why G is the next one on the circle going in a clockwise direction. Well, I moved the camera back to show the full keyboard to explain why the circle of this is a circle. Now using this C to G fifth interval example that I just showed. I will move to the far left and play fifth intervals up the keyboard to simulate moving around a circle in a clockwise direction. So starting at this C note right here, I'll play the first fifth interval, which is C and G. And now I'll make G the tonic note and play the fifth interval with G to D. And then I'll make D the tonic note and play the fifth interval of D to A which was right here. And then we'll make A the tonic note and play the fifth interval A to E. And then we'll make E the tonic note and play the fifth interval E to B.
And at this point, I'm going to move a little closer. And now we'll make B the tonic note and play the fifth interval note F sharp, which is right here. And F sharp is the fifth interval note, and if you're never sure, you can count seven half steps. And let's do that now. So we we'll start with B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're at F sharp. Now these pair of scales that are at the bottom three slots and the same with the minors uh, group, they're called enharmonic scales. And I'm going to be going to be talking a lot more about them here in a few minutes and explain what they are and why we have them. But what they do uh, essentially is they enable you to transition from playing sharp scales to playing flat scales. And so we stopped here at F sharp, but to pick up going forward, I'm not going to think of this black key as F sharp. I'm going to think of it as G flat. And we'll play the next uh, fifth interval from G flat to D flat. And then we'll play the next fifth interval from D flat to A flat. And then we'll play the next fifth interval from A flat to E flat. And then we'll play, play the next fifth interval from E flat to B flat. And then moving a little closer, we'll play the next fifth interval of B flat to F. And at this point, we're right here, and then we'll go from F to C. And by the way, this last key right here, that is a C key. And we'll play the last fifth interval, which going from here to C, going from F to C. And that's why it's a circle, because it comes back again. Now, I'm going to talk about an enharmonic. This is a good time to talk about enharmonic uh, scales. The three enharmonic pair of scales at the bottom of both the major circle and a minor circle facilitates the transition from the sharp set of scale names on the right side of the circle to the flat set of scale names on the left side of the circle. So these act as, as a transition from going from sharp key signatures over to flat key signatures. And each pair of enharmonic scales shares the same physical key on the keyboard. So the three major enharmonic pair of scales are C sharp and D flat, which is this key right here, F sharp or G flat, which is this key right here, and B natural or C flat, which is this key right here. Now, 99% of the time, this key is B natural, but there are times when it's also considered C flat. Now for minor scales, we have A sharp or B flat, which is this key right here. We have D sharp or E flat, 
which is this key right here. And then we have G sharp or A flat, which is that key right there. And the two things you want to remember about enharmonic scales is that they provide a transition from the sharp set of scales to the flat set of scales. And they are the same physical key. The pair of enharmonic scales share the same physical key. Now the next definition is octave range. The octave range is 12 distinct adjoining keys, 7 white and 5 black, on a piano. They can begin on either a white or a black key. And they are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we'll go over those. A, B, C, D, E, F, G plus the five black notes, which would be C sharp or D flat, D sharp or E flat, F sharp or G flat, G sharp or A flat, and A sharp or B flat. Those 12 keys, and again an octave range can start and end anywhere on the keyboard, but it's 12 uh, distinct adjoining keys. And that's what constitutes music in the Western world. I think it's phenomenal that it, just those 12 notes have given us all the music for the past 400 and maybe 500 years. The octave range is to music what the 26 letter alphabet is to the English language. The next definition is consonant sound. Consonant sound is a pleasing sound produced by two notes considered primary and stable. A fifth interval key and its corresponding tonic key produce a consonant sound. Because of this, the fifth interval key and the tonic key have a special relationship and are widely, widely used in music composition. The next definition is the consonant ratio. The consonant ratio is the basis for the circle of fifths. For that reason, a detailed explanation is warranted. Dating back to the Greek mathematician Pythagoras, and by the way, that's the same Pythagoras that explained the mathematics related to the right angle. It has been known that simple frequency ratios between two vibrating strings a varying lengths produce a more consonant sound. An example of a simple frequency ratio is 2 to 1 or 3 to 2. A piano has variable length strings too. Each piano key when depressed results in a felt tipped hammer striking that particular key's group of strings that results in a unique number of vibrations per second. This is called a key's frequency and the sound produced is called a pitch. There are 88 keys on a keyboard with 88 unique pitches. The higher pitches on a keyboard are to the right, which is up in this area right here. And we can play some of these notes. And the lower pitches on the keyboard are to the left, where the strings are longer. A 
fifth interval on a piano produces a consonant sound based on a simple frequency ratio of three to two or one and a half to one. This means that the fifth interval note has one and a half times the number of vibrations per second as its tonic note. And to demonstrate the arithmetic of this comparison, on the screen is an example showing the fifth interval at three select locations on the keyboard. As you can see in each of these three locations, the frequency of the fifth interval key has 1.5 times the number of vibrations per second in comparison to the frequency of its corresponding tonic key to its left. The result is that all fifth intervals on a piano maintain this ratio and all will produce a consonant sound. So regardless of what uh, combination we want, we want to do the A and the E. I don't know what the number of vibrations per second this A would produce. But whatever it is, this E, which is the fifth interval up, would have 1.5 times that number of vibrations. If you have an acoustic piano at home, ask your piano tuner the next time he or she comes by about piano key frequencies related to the fifth interval. Also, this is a good time to talk about relative scales. A major, if you haven't noticed already, a major scale and a minor scale can have the same key signature. Scales with the same key signature are known as relative scales. The tonic note for a relative minor scale is found on the keyboard three half steps down or to the left of the tonic note of its relative major scale. So let me demonstrate. G major and E minor are relative scales because they, because they share the same key signature, which is F sharp. And if we go to G, and we go down three half steps, one, two, three, we find its relative minor scale. Uh, let's look at uh, E major and C sharp minor. They, these two are relative scales because they share the same key signature of four sharp notes. And let's look at E and go down three half steps to the left. One, two, three. And that is C sharp. And C sharp is the relative minor to E major. And let's do one more. A flat major and F minor are relative scales. And this is A flat major. And let's go down to the left three half steps. One, two, three. And there is the F, which represents uh, F minor. Now, before we start to examine the circle of this diagram in more detail, I want to talk briefly about key signatures. The basis for a scale's key signature is the major scale pattern of intervals and also the minor scale pattern of intervals. The major scale pattern is as follows, and I'm, and I'm showing this on the screen. The WS is abbreviated for whole step. The HS is abbreviation for half step. So the major scale pattern 
is as follows. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And let me play a scale. Uh, I'll play a D major scale. And D major scale has two sharp notes, F and C. And we'll, and we'll play that pattern. So this is D, and this is where we'll start. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. If you notice, we played two black keys, and they were F sharp and C sharp. And that is why D major has two sharp notes. Okay, let's, uh, let's play another one. Let's uh, play E flat major, which has three flat notes. So we'll start here. This is E flat. So we'll do whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And E flat major has three flats. Uh, e flat, of course, B flat, and A flat. And that's where that's where this comes from, from that pattern of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now the minor scale pattern is as follows: whole step. Half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. And if you play that same pattern for the minor scale, for the relative minor scale, you will come up with the same. Let's do it for uh, C minor. Let's apply the minor scale pattern to C minor. And let's see what we get. So we'll start here, we're on C, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. So playing the minor scale pattern to C, we came up with three flat notes. B, E, and A, and they are the same three for its relative major scale of E flat major. Now the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, when you look at key signatures, uh, any given sharp and flat notes in any given key signature, uh, these are not just pulled out of the air. A composer don't make these up. Uh, key, key signatures, are, are they're not subject to a composer's whim or a songwriter's whim. They are based on established patterns for major scales and minor scales that do not change. There are no random notes in a key signature. They're all due based on the major scale pattern and a minor scale pattern. And I encourage you to test it out. Apply, apply the uh, major scale pattern to E and see if you don't get these four sharp notes. Apply it to B flat and you'll see that the major scale pattern to B flat and you'll get two flats. And then do the same for their uh, relative minor scale. And while you're at it, do it for C major 
an A minor and see if you don't get uh, no flats or sharps. It should be all white keys. Let us now focus on the outer circle that contains the major scale names. The right side of the outer circle contains scales that have sharp key signatures right here and it actually goes all the way around to here to C sharp. And the left side has the flat notes and they the number increase as you go counterclockwise around the circle and they stop right here with seven flats for C flat major. Each major scale letter name except C is shown twice. Once as a natural key and once with either a sharp notation or a flat notation. So if you look at D major, and then we come around and we have D major down here, we have D flat major. So this is natural, and this has a flat symbol next to it. E is natural over on this side of the circle, and E flat is on this side of the circle. So one letter name will be natural and the other will have either a flat or a sharp associated with it. F up here is F natural and F down here is F sharp. And the same for the inner circle. Uh, you have an F sharp over here and the F over here is natural. You have C sharp over here, C sharp minor, and C minor is natural. So the same combination of, my, of natural keys plus keys with either a sharp or a flat note. And <clears throat> You'll notice that the number of sharp symbols, sharp notes in a uh, case in a scale, increase as you go uh, clockwise around the circle. So G has one sharp, D has two sharps, A has three, E has four. Also notice that the F sharp that's in G actually carries forward into D. So you have F sharp and C sharp. And then these two carry forward into A major. You have F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. And then these three carry forward into E major, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. And I mentioned that their key signatures for major, they apply to the minor keys also. So E minor has one sharp and it's F. By the way, if you look at a, uh, a piece of music that you may be studying and the key signature shows one sharp note, that sharp note will always be F sharp always. It does not change. If you look at a piece of music that has two sharp notes in its key signature, those two notes will always be F sharp and C sharp. If you look at a, a piece of music that has three flat notes, those three flat notes will be B flat, E flat, and A flat. These do not change. You'll never, you'll never see a key signature with uh, three flat notes uh, and one be, um, let's say, G and F and, and D. They won't, 
get mixed up like that. If you see a key signature with three flat notes, they will always be B flat, E flat, and A flat. If you see a, a key signature with one flat note, it will always be B flat. There won't be anything else. And again, that comes back to the patterns that we just, the whole step, half step patterns we showed for um, major scales and minor scales. I want you to also note that the C, I mentioned these uh, scales are shown twice. C is shown three times, both as a natural, as C sharp, and as C flat. And the same holds for A minor. A minor is a natural, and it's also shown as A sharp and A flat. And while we're talking about the minor scales, I want you to notice that the minor scales are turned one quarter turn. So that up here C is at the 12 o'clock position. Over here C is at the 9 o'clock position. But these are fifth intervals too, and, it's, and the same pattern follows. So you have C here at 9. The next one up is G, which is what we have here. The next minor scale is D, which we have here. Then the next one is A minor, which we have. And it follows that sequence around to C sharp. And we run out of sharp notes. Now C sharp is the last major sharp, so we stop here for the time being. But notice from C, we, then we go to F as we go counterclockwise. And then we go to B flat. And then we go to E flat, which is over here. And then we go to A flat, which is right there. So the minor scale sequence of scales is turned one quarter turn, but it follows the same sequence. By the way, I will call the, um, the major scales that share a letter name companion scales. And I will also call the minor scales companion scales. For instance, D and D flat uh, are companion scales. E and E flat are companion scales. F sharp and F are companion scales. Now, while we are discussing companion scales that share the same letter name, either major or minor, note that the total number of sharps and or flats for both companion scales equals 7. So, A major has three sharp notes, A flat major has four flat notes, and together these equal seven. Let's look at E major, has four sharp notes. E flat major has three flat notes, and that equals seven. Let's look at B major, which has five sharp notes. Let's look at B flat major, which has two flat notes, and together they equal seven. Let's look at C major. C major has no sharps or flats. C sharp major has seven sharp notes. C flat major has seven flat notes. So the companion scales together, either minor or major, the companion scales that share the same letter name have seven, combination of seven sharp and flat notes. 
Now this is helpful to know because when you start playing music, you may uh, play a, a song that has two sharp notes in D major and has two sharp notes and you know that they will always be in F and a C. And if you come across for some reason, you needed to know what D flat major had, you know that if it has D major has two sharp notes, then D flat major has to have five flat notes. Together they have to equal seven. And I want to mention one other important factor regarding that is that the notes that are sharp in any given scale will not appear as a flat note in their companion scale. And let me explain. So we have E major and has four sharp notes, F, C, G, and D. And then we come over here to E flat major and these flat notes are B, E, and A. You will not find F, C, G, or D flat for E flat major, nor will you find B, E, or A sharp here. There are no duplicates. You will not find a, a duplicate. Uh, you will not find one note sharp here and, and also find it flat here in its companion scale. Let's look at G. G has one sharp note, F. Now let's come down here and look at G flat. G flat has six flat notes, but none of them are F. F is already taken up here as a sharp note. Again, there are no duplicates. And the same holds, of course, for the minor scales too. Now to reiterate, as you go clockwise around the circle, you will add uh, sharp notes and you will only add one. You will, will not have an instance where you add uh, more than one sharp note. And the same for the flat notes. As you go counterclockwise, you will add one. And again, the previous note that is, in this case, flat, like B, that will carry forward. So now you'll have B and E. And those two will carry forward. You will now have B, E, and A. And those three will carry forward and you will now have B, E, A, and D. And by the way, this is a good time to point out a little helpful hint that many students, uh, the, first four, the first four flat notes are spell the word bead, B-E-A-D. Now, you might think, well, that's nice. <laughs> uh, have all these sharps and they increase one by one and everything. And you, you're probably thinking, well, I'll never remember all this. Uh, I mean, this is just too much. And, uh, and you're right. If you had to remember it, it would be too much. As some uh, students, for the sharp notes, they have like a little helpful uh, saying like, uh, I wrote it down. I'll do this by memory. It's like, Father Charles goes down avenues eating blueberries. And that's where the F-C-G-D-A-E-B comes along. And because that's the sequence that you add the sharp notes uh, you can remember that or remember something similar to it. But if you have a circle of fists in front of you, then 
Actually, the sequence for adding sharp notes is right here, and it starts with the F. So for G major, we have F sharp. And then for D major, we add a C, which is comes from here. And then for A major, we add a G, which is right here. And then the fourth one we add for E major is D. So this is your sequence for adding sharp notes until you come down all the way to B. And that's B sharp is the last sharp that you add. So the sequence is right here for adding uh, these sharp uh, notes. Now, to add flat notes, you go in reverse. You start at the B and you go counterclockwise. The first one that you add is B up here to the F major. And then E is the, is the next one, which you added right here. Then A is the next one, which you added over here. Then D is the fourth one, which you added right here. And you keep following that sequence around to F flat is the last one that you add right there. And let's see if I can get my hands on... Uh, if you have a circle of fists, like a work copy, you can do, you can use stickies like I have here, if they'll stick. Or if you have a, a hard copy, and I recommend you get a hard copy of the Circle of Fists and, uh, and make notations on it. And this is one of the notations you should make. That the sharp sequence for adding sharps starts with the F and goes around to B. And then the flat sequence for adding flats starts with the B and goes counterclockwise around and ends with the F. Let us think outside the box somewhat and look at the circle of fists in a different way. As a partially completed circle of fists showing every other scale, this will give you a new perspective on the arrangement of the scales. The effect of doing this is to show every other scale name on the circle of fists is a whole step apart from each other. There is a pattern here you may find useful to help you remember the arrangement of the scales. And by the way, I'm going to, uh, in a few minutes, put the other partial uh, circle of fists up with, with the F and the G and uh, to show you that also. But C major is at the 12 o'clock position, and D major is at the 2 o'clock position, and E major is at the 4 o'clock position, F sharp is at 6 o'clock, and A flat is at 8 o'clock, B flat major is at 10 o'clock, and we come back to noontime. They are at the even hour positions and they also have an even number of either sharp notes or flat notes. And the minor scales are also a whole step apart. A is at the 12 o'clock position. B is a whole step up from A. C sharp is a whole step up from B. D sharp is a whole step up from C sharp and going counterclockwise, G is a whole step down from A, F is a whole step down from G, and E flat is a whole step down 
from F. Okay, the other partial circle of this is now shown on the screen. As before, the effect of doing this is to show every other scale name on the circle of this is a whole step apart from each other. For instance, F is at the 11 o'clock position, G is at the 1 o'clock position, A is at the 3 o'clock position, B is at the 5 o'clock position, and C sharp is at the 7 o'clock position, and all of these are a whole step apart from each other. Now going counterclockwise, E flat is a whole step down from F, D flat is a whole step down from E flat, and C flat is a whole step down from D flat. The corresponding relative minor notes are also a whole step apart from each other, and the number of sharp notes and flat notes in this group are odd in number and also located at the odd hour hand positions. Also notice that the major and minor enharmonic scales line up with each other on the same physical key. So C sharp and D flat are the same key. Uh, B and C flat are the same key as with the minor uh, and harmonic uh, sc scales also. Now we are going to think a little further outside the box. Based on what has been covered so far, let us attempt to create a circle of fists from scratch. So to begin, I've already completed the inner circle and the outer circle. And the outer circle will contain the major scales and the inner circle will contain the minor scales and the space between the circles will be for the key signatures. By the way, for your reference, you can create these circles on a regular sheet of paper, 8.5 by 11, in Microsoft Word using the Insert Shapes Basic Shapes commands and utilizing the Shift key in creating and adjusting the size of the circles. So first we want to mark 12 stations with a dash on both circles where the hour hands on a clock would be. And we're also going to draw three flat lines on the outer circle and the inner circle for the bottom three enharmonic keys. And at that point, we will then begin completing the uh, circle of fists. Okay, we can now start. I will start with the major scale at the 12 o'clock position and we'll place a C here for C major. But we're not going to fill in the major scales sequentially. Uh, like our diagram that we showed a few minutes ago uh, where the scales are a whole step apart, we're going to utilize uh, that uh, diagram to complete this uh, diagram here from, from scratch. So we're going to put D right here. We're going to put E right here at the 4 o'clock position. And we're going to put F sharp down here at the 6 o'clock position. And all of these are a whole step apart. 
and then at the 10 o'clock position we're going to put B flat at the 8 o'clock position we're going to put A flat and then at the 6 o'clock position we're going to put G flat And to verify, we do have, these are in harmonic keys, and this is the same physical key. Okay, now we're going to start with the other scales, and a, a, whole, a fifth interval up from C is G, and a whole step up from G is A, And a whole step up from A is B. And a whole step up from B is C sharp. And a whole step down from G is F. A whole step down from F is E flat. And a whole step down from E flat is D flat. And a whole step down from D flat is C flat. And you can see that our enharmonics uh, scales line up. And that's the major scales on the circle of fifths. Now we're going to complete our minor scales, but we're not going to start at the 12 o'clock position. We're going to start at the 9 o'clock position. And if you recall, the minor pattern of scales are a quarter turn to the left. So we're going to put our C right here. And then uh, we can just follow this pattern around because uh, it follows the same same pattern. The next one here is G and then we have D and then we have A and we continue around with E at the one o'clock position. B is at the two o'clock position F sharp is at the 3 o'clock position. And C sharp is at the 4 o'clock position. Now we have to fill in the sharp side of the enharmonic scales. And let me just bring your attention if G is a fifth interval up from C, then G sharp has to be a fifth interval up from C sharp. So G sharp goes right here. If D is a fifth interval up from G, then D sharp must be a fifth interval up from uh, G sharp. So we'll put D-sharp right here. And then finally, the next, a fifth interval up from D-sharp is A-sharp. And we have to come down the uh, if we go counterclockwise, at the 8 o'clock position is an F, and at the, six, at the 7 o'clock position is B flat, 
at the six o'clock position is E flat. And at the five o'clock position is A flat. And we see that our enharmonic scales uh, line up. G sharp and A flat is the same physical key. Uh, D sharp and E flat is the same physical key. And A sharp and B flat is the same physical key. So that's our minor uh, scales. Now we have to start with the key signatures. And uh, at this point, there's one thing you just have to remember, and that is we can start with the G major, and that the key signature for G major and also for E minor is F sharp. And we'll put that in right here. Now we have to add our additional sharps and the notes and they uh, increase by one as we come around and we'll finish here. But if you recall, I mentioned that the pattern, uh, se the sequence for adding sharp notes is actually on the circle. And we start right here and the next sharp note is C. So we'll, and F carries forward. So we'll put F sharp and C sharp uh, for at the D major for D major, and then these two will carry forward. And then we'll add G sharp. And then these three will carry forward. And we'll add D sharp. And then for B major, these four will carry forward. And then we'll add our fifth sharp note, which is A. And then our next major scale at the six o'clock position is F sharp. And these five carry forward. And our next sharp note added will be E. And then finally for C sharp, uh, C natural is all white keys. C sharp is all sharp keys. So it has seven sharp notes. And these six carry forward. And the last sharp added is B. B sharp. So that completes the sharp side of the circle of fists. And now we have to go to the flat side. And uh, this is something else you just have to remember. Uh, we start with a B. But as you can, as we mentioned earlier, the sequence for adding flat notes is the opposite of adding sharp notes. When we added sharp notes, we started here and followed it around. When we add flat notes, we start here and go counterclockwise and follow this, this, this around. So we'll do B flat for F major. And that carries forward, and we'll do E flat.
And those two carry forward and we'll add A flat. And these three carry forward and we'll add a D flat. And these four carry forward and then we'll add G flat. And these five flat notes carry forward and we'll add C flat. And finally, these six flat notes will carry forward and we'll add F flat. And that's it. That completes the circle of fists from scratch. But I do not recommend you stop here. If music is defined by one thing, is that it is that you become better through repetition. So I'm going to ask you to use the video that we just completed and that section of the video that we just completed and also try to get you a hard copy of a full circle of fists and try to create one from scratch on your own and do that for seven straight days now at first you're going to have you're going to have to be referring to the video and the completed circle of fists. I understand that. But as you get up to day five, six, seven, you'll be referring to that video and the hard copy less and less. And once you finish, well, at the end of seven days, you'll know the circle of fists uh, pretty well. And there's other uh, patterns here within the circle of fists that I did not go into because they really are outside the scope of this video. But knowing the circle of fists will be invaluable when you learn chords and harmony. And also it will advance your ability to understand and play music as you progress through your studies. So good luck, God bless, and thank you for watching.
Thank you for watching.